It's exciting to know that we serve the God that created all things. And he has everything in his hands. Hallelujah. I know a lot of people get troubled. They're chewing their nails and they're worrying about what if this happens and what if that happens. But I'm going to tell you, we are in the hands of the Lord. Nothing's happened by accident. God knows everything before it ever comes. And he knows what to do in the midst of it all. And I trust him. He's my shepherd. How about you? Hallelujah. He's my shepherd. Amen. He's got this. Praise God. He's got the whole world in his hands. Amen. We, we're going to praise him and worship him and exalt him. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to say all is well. All is well. All as well. Hallelujah. The whole world is in his hands and my family is in his hands and my finances are in his hands and everything that I have is in his hands. I praise you. I praise your wonderful and holy name. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. So good to have all of you tonight. Ask a seat up. Praise God. I'm excited about this service. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do. Amen. And I'm excited because the Lord uses the little bit that we have for His glory. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I, I want to be one of those that's, you know, Got me a few fish. Got me a little bit of bread, Lord. Hallelujah. And he says, oh, let me, let me bless it. Let me bless it. Let me multiply it. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. I just love being a part of the kingdom of God and everything that is going on in this generation. I'm glad to be a part of it and what the Lord is doing. Hallelujah. I want to welcome all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Those that are watching live stream, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Amen. Whenever you come to bring your offering and tithes, we have the pledge cards, which they'll be talking more about it, the Faith Promise pledge cards. They're up here. So make sure that you get a pledge card in just a moment when you come up to bring your offering and tithes. Be sure and get a pledge card. And I'm just going to throw this out there real quick right now. When you write that giving, the pledge that's going to be going for Global Missions, the number that you write, make sure it is a monthly number. Because in a minute, when we tally these totals up, we're going to multiply them by 12. So I'll be feeding the numbers to the sound booth back there, and, and they're going to add them all up, and then they're going to multiply it by 12 to get an annual total of giving. So when you write number in that pledge card, be sure and write the monthly number. Amen. So we'll get a proper total at the end when we tally it all up. Amen. Well, somebody say praise the Lord. I'm going to bless the offering and tithes right now and give you an opportunity to give of your offering and tithe. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you, Lord, for this year, the ninth annual REACH Conference of Global Missions. Lord, we thank you for it. We ask you to bless it tonight. We ask you to bless this remainder of this service. Lord, use the little bit that we have. Bless the offering, the tithes, in the name of Jesus. And everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Come, bring your offering and your tithes, and let's worship the Lord.
last time you said a prayer for a place you've never gone and a face you've never known when's the last time you couldn't sleep because the pain of your heart was tearing you apart what about love what about mercy what about all those needing jesus today and what about hope and what about
Come on, praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we just close our eyes and lift our hands for a minute? Come on. Hallelujah. Let's just thank him. Thank him for this great mercy. Thank him for the love. Thank him for this grace. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that is with us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Come on, where would we be without it? Where would we be without this mercy? Where would we be without this love? Where would we be without this grace? Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want to ask Brother Lehman to come. and He is going to lead us in this faith faith promise and i appreciate brother and sister lehman amen Amen. they are very very much a part of the heart of this church here in atascacita and we love y'all and thank you for coming every year and being a blessing and a help amen thank you well praise the lord everyone well, I got a question to ask you. Have you talked to the Lord? Have you asked Him about this service? I mentioned this morning about asking. And uh, by doing so, God does give direction. Now, there is in the uh, book of Mark, chapter 21, and also in Luke, uh, no, I'm sorry, Mark, chapter 12, and Luke 21. It talks about uh, Jesus going into the temple, and the Bible says he was watching the giving that was being received. He observed that there were a number of wealthy uh, persons as they went by, the Bible says, giving out of plenty. Then he noticed that uh, there was a poor widow woman. She came by and cast in two mites, that make a farthing. Now, widows are spoken of many times in the scripture. And uh, a mite was the smallest of copper coins, normally equal to one-eighth of a penny. Not even worth a penny, just one-eighth. The Bible says the farthing was a Roman coin uh, worth about one-fourth of a penny. Uh, But There is something about this particular setting that can get your attention and really make you think. Because the Bible lets us know that the message declared by our Lord on this occasion is that a gift gift is to be evaluated not by its size, but by a comparison of the gift with the total amount possessed by the giver. So the Lord does watch our giving. He knows what we give, and he knows what we keep. But as we look at this particular setting, we realize that a large donation out of abundance may be less significant than a small donation out of poverty. Now, the scripture says that this poor widow, she gave the smallest possible gift But it was all that she had, and the Bible says it was even all of her living. I mean, she gave everything. She couldn't give any more. She had no more to give. Uh, But she gave it all. Now, man sees what is given. God sees what is left. And uh, I I was uh, thinking this afternoon about a service that I was in. Uh, This has been a number of years ago, but at the close of the service, after I had preached on on giving, uh, there was a widow lady. 
she came down the front to the front of the church and uh, she, she wanted my attention. Then she began to relate. She said, I have no income. She said, my husband was killed in an accident a number of years ago and he had not paid enough money in for me to receive anything at all. So she said, I have no income. But she said, tonight in this service, I felt the Lord impress me that I was to make a $10 a month commitment. So she said, I made it. She said, after the service, she said, I walked back to my seat, sat down, opened up my purse, and there was a $100 bill in my purse. She was excited, and you can see why. Then the next morning, one of the men in the church was driving me to the airport to catch a flight back to St. Louis. And I related to him about the widow lady and what she had done and, uh, uh, you know, what had happened. You know, she had a, a hundred dollar in, uh, in her purse. And then he said, I knew who that was. He said, last night, my wife told me, said, I feel like I'm to give her some money. He said, I didn't know how much she gave her. But he said, and he was so excited because his family had a part in what that widow lady needed. Now, there's something about widow ladies that is mentioned many times in the scripture. And I believe the Lord wants us to realize that he's even watching this service. He, he's, he's not up in heaven with his eyes shut, not at all. But he's watching exactly what we are, uh, we are doing. Now, uh, one pastor from Texas related to me about two widow ladies in his church. He related that, uh, that in a commitment service, one committed uh, to uh, give $10 a month, and the other gave $1 a month. And then he said, now, the lady that gave $10 a month, that, you know, she really didn't have it, but her son heard what his mother had done. He said, if my mother has got faith enough to believe God for $10 a month, he said, I will pay it for her. The need was met. The lady that committed $1 a month was a multimillionaire. At that time, she was in the nursing home while her family was spending all of her money. You see, Jesus watches and he remembers. He watches everything that we do and, and just, you know, it's so interesting to know exactly what our God, uh, you know, watches us and what he thinks about our giving. So tonight, I'm, I'm simply presenting uh, the question, did you ask the Lord today what you should give? Now, I notice the, uh, the, the younger ones and the teenagers that are sitting here. Uh, when I uh, saw the younger ones, I remembered uh, I was in a church in Kentucky. And uh, just before I preached, uh, a, a little boy, I suppose he would probably have been 8 to 10, came up to me. He said, Brother Lehman, he said, last year I made a $5 a month commitment and Grandpa started giving me $5. He said, this year I'm going to make a $10 commitment because God had answered. Now, and then I look, I look at the teens. I was in Pennsylvania and uh, there was a teenager that uh, was thinking about what he wanted to give in that service. He had come to the service with an amount in his mind. He said, I, I got in there and, and God start, started saying, double that amount. He doubled that amount and ended up getting a 400% raise on his job. Why? Because he still watches. And he's watching this congregation tonight, knowing exactly what's been rolling through our mind today. And I trust that you will just uh, obey as the Lord has given you the direction because that's where the, that's where the blessings come in. Yes. When you obey what God Almighty is telling you to do and when we obey and when we obey, that's the blessing that is a result. God bless you.
All right, if you'll all stand, and we are going to pray. I am going to put these in the middle. The, the ones that you see in the middle, this is the one for receiving these pledge cards as you bring it. I'm going to put it in the middle over here. And we're just going to pray for the Lord to bless this tonight. And again, when you write the number on the pledge card, make sure it's a monthly number. Because it is already built in. I just found out they have a formula that is going to be working. As they are adding this, it's automatically going to be putting in a 12 multiple into it. So be sure in whatever number you put on that pledge card that it is a monthly number. And then it will tally. And at the end, we will see, amen, what the pledges will be coming in. Amen. For Global missions. Now, I want to remind everybody this. Global missions, this faith promise, it is not to take the place of tithes. All right? That's not, okay, I just get to move it here. That's not what this is. It doesn't take the place of the giving to the offerings for your own home church. This is an extra and above. It's a faith promise. The Lord provide it. You're going to give it. And it is for the purpose of global missions. And we're glad to be a part of this. We do this because I want to be a part of the heartbeat of God throughout this world. And I'm so thankful for all of you for being mission-minded. God bless all of you. Thank you for being mission-minded, amen, and being a mission-minded church. Let's pray right now, Lord. I just pray. God, we do not live by the economy of this world. And we stand on the word of the living God. Your kingdom is the most important thing in our lives. And I thank you, God, and we believe for your provisions to be in accordance to your word as we stand and we give, Lord. And I pray that you would bless each person. Help them, Lord, as they begin to follow you in the leading of what to give for a global missions purpose. We pray it to be upon them in the name of Jesus. All right. If you would, just write down the, the number and, and bring up and put the pledge into these buckets that are in the middle. Make sure it goes to those, and we'll tally them up here shortly. If you don't have pledge cards, we have them up here. On the side of these flags, if you need one.
need to pray for the multimedia. This is where the pressure sets on them. I don't know about you, you know, over the calculator thing, but I would hate to be the one having to do this while everybody watches me. Amen. All right, are y'all ready? Here we go. We're going to start tallying this up and see what it comes up to being. All right, $3. Fifty. Fifty. Oh, I seen something scratch through. It's actually seventy-five. I don't know if y'all can figure out how to correct that. All right. Fifty. One hundred. Four dollars, one hundred, ten, four hundred, one hundred, fifty, fifty, one hundred. 160, 100, 50. I need a drum roll. Yeah. Drum roll. <laughs> that helps. 300, 45. Five hundred thirty fifty ten ten twenty five fifty And 100, 200, 75, 130, 100, 50, 200. 300, 250, 20, 60, 10, 5, 600, 50, 100, 15 dollars, 50, 1,400, 10, 100, 20, 40, 100, 300, 40, 100, 200, 200, 10, 20, 200, 300, 20, one dollar, 250 dollars, 
Secretary of Global Missions. Praise God. Everyone, if you're here in the front, stay up here. I'm not going to preach. Musicians, if you would stay, at least somebody to help me out. 
I, I'm not going to preach. I don't need to preach right now. I have a message. I, I have everything ready. But God is doing the work. I just want to step aside and let God do what he wants to do. I want to read you two verses of scripture. And then I'm going to challenge you to do something. Joshua 17, 14, and 15. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, Why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for an inheritance? We are a numerous people, and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. Joshua said, If you are so numerous, if the hill country of Ephraim is, Ephraim is too small for you, go up into the forest, clear the land for yourselves. They're in the land of the Perizzites and the Rephaites. What he was saying to them, you said you're a big people. You said you're a large people. You said you're a great people. You said you're a mighty people. Your tribe is too big for what you've got. He said, go up and take it. Go take it. He didn't make it complicated. God is telling you right now, go up and take it. Whatever you need from God tonight, go up and take it. It's not complicated. I don't need to preach a 30 minute, 40 minute message. I don't need to give you all kinds of scriptures. Go up and take it. If you need healing tonight, go up and take it. Claim it in Jesus name. If you need direction from God, go up and take it. If you need an anointing from God for the ministry that God has called you to, go up and take it. Stop sitting around waiting for something to happen. Stop waiting for your pastor to tell you to do it. Go up and take it. Whatever needs you have tonight. If you need the Holy Ghost, you need to make your way to this altar. You need to tell somebody, pray with me. If you need healing, make your way to this altar. Whatever you need in God tonight, you make your way to this altar. And just go up and take it. Just go get it because God has it for you right now. Let's worship God. I want us to pray all across this building. I'm going to pray a prayer of faith. And when I'm done praying the prayer of faith, whatever your need is, I'm going to ask you to do this if you feel uncomfortable that's your business. It's a step of faith. You can use a mask or whatever you want. If you have a need, I want you to step out from where you are and make your way as close to the front. It's not more spiritual here than there, but you're making a statement. It's a step of faith. <sighs> Just go get it. Just go take it. Just go grab you some. God's got healing in this house. God has provision in this house. God, my finances need help. Just go take it. God, I need a job. Just go take it. Jesus, I'm asking right now for the flowing of your spirit in this place, the power of the Holy Ghost to minister in this house. Lord, that you would touch us right now. Every need, you understand. God, you've already done the miraculous in this place. You've already been responded more than we thought you would. God, you are so awesome and wonderful to us. I'm believing you to touch your people right now. I bind doubt. I bind fear. I bind unbelief. I bind division. I bind everything that would hinder the flow of your spirit. God, we release faith right now. Let there be an increase of our faith. And God, help our faith in this house tonight. Let miracles take place. Let there be signs and wonders, the miraculous happening right now. In the name of Jesus. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to begin to praise God. If you have what you need, find somebody to pray with. When God responds to you, then you go find somebody to pray with. Let that faith be infectious one to the other tonight. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com.
www.thebrightlinesmissionsfamilyfellowship.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.